Hi, everyone. Welcome to this session of Book Talk. We have with us uh, Achantya Roop Ray, who is the author of Tulika's newest book, Jupli's Honey Box. And we're very excited to have him here. Um, so just to give a quick introduction of Achantya before we start, um, he is a writer, translator, and a senior bilingual journalist with more than 25 years of experience in English and Bengali dailies. He has translated books like Amitabh Ghosh's The Hungry Tide and Upamanyu Chatterjee's The Revenge of the Non-Vegetarian from English to Bengali. He has also worked on uh, a bunch of books for Tulika as well. And this is his first children's book that he's written. So uh, welcome, Achantya. It is so good to have you here. Thank you. So, you know, Achantya, just to kind of you know, dive right in. I think the first thing I want to say is I read Jupli's Honey Box and I really liked the story. Thank and you. It, it was really well written, it was lovely. And as mentioned in the bio in your book, you know, you've said that you have a special interest uh, in people and the environment, both of which you can clearly see in the book. So what inspired you to kind of write this story set in the Sundarban? Uh, you know what? I love to write about people and places I've seen, uh, about common people, their dreams and sufferings, uh, their day-to-day -day life. These things uh, come naturally in whatever I, I write. But the real inspiration behind writing this particular story was uh, my six-year-old daughter. Okay. She was, uh, I wrote it last year. She was five then, and she's a voracious reader. Uh, and before this, I never wrote anything for children. So I thought, uh, why don't I write something for her? Uh, why don't I write a story for her? So I tried and it, it happened. I even named the character after, after her. Oh, really? I call okay. her. So, so uh, I, did, I had given uh, some other name when I sent the uh, manuscript or whatever. I, I wrote the story as it came to my mind. Uh, I typed it out uh, on my phone so whenever I had a little time. So I wrote the entire story on my phone. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> no, but that's really like, that's honestly really lovely to know. And the fact that you've named the character after your daughter, that's such a, I think that's a very sweet tribute also in a way, right? To your child, which I think, has she read the book? Have you told her yes. the story yet? Yeah, she has read, uh, read uh, both the English and the Bengali version. Yeah. And how did she react when she saw that it was called Jukli? Uh, she was uh, very happy. Yeah, I'm sure. But that's that's amazing. I, I'm sure she'll be really like happy and she'll be going and saying that, oh, you know, I have and a book she, with my... She had read the original manuscript and there uh, the name was different, the name of the character was different. So mm -hmm. then I, and I didn't show her the proof So I, with the illustration. So finally, when it came out, it was yeah. interesting. But that, no, that's really amazing. And, you know, kind of talking further about the book, one of the things that really uh, caught my eye, and I think for a lot of people who've been, you know, kind of reading it and picking it up, um, is that, you know, um, you really get into the culture of the place, right? You really go into Jupli's life in the Sundarban, be it, you know, how her day starts, you know, the food she eats, how her family life is, how she goes to school and, you know, different things. So what was world building like for you for this story, considering though, yes, it is a, a sort of fictional character and such, but it's very much rooted in reality, right? So how did you kind of go about building the setting and kind of putting that whole life into place for Jupli? Uh, it just came naturally to me. Uh, I, grew, as a child, I grew up in a village. Okay. So, uh, and uh, till I reached my adulthood, I, uh, I spent my whole life in a village that was far away from the city. So I know what village life is, um, is like. And about Sundarbans, Sundarbans is uh, not an not uh, alien territory to me. 
I have been going there since I was in my teens. Uh, two of my uncles uh, used to stay in a village there. One of them uh, as, uh, sp uh, still has a house there. And after, after that, when I started translating the Hangri type, I visited the Hindavan several times for, uh, because it will help uh, me translate book. And then as a reporter, I, uh, I visited Sundarbans innumerable times. I had been to the villages. Uh, I had spent time with the villagers. I stayed with them, uh, but I never uh, had been to the Sundarbans as a tourist. So uh, I know village life and I know Sundarbans life in the Sundarbans and how it, it is. So it, uh, so it came to my writing. That's how. No. No, but it's very clearly reflected because it's so immersive when you read the book that, you know, you can really, like the way you've really mentioned each detail. And, you know, I have to kind of give a shout out to Shivam Chaudhary, who's, I think, done such a wonderful job on the illustrations uh, in this book. And actually, you know what, I think I'm just going to quickly show a spread just to show people. So this is one of the spreads, if you can see clearly. I think and I like to uh, I like to photograph also. I like to uh, photograph things and places. Uh, I mean, quite interested in photography. So I I had sent I so, so far as I can remember, I had sent several of my photographs to uh, Shivam while she was he was illustrating. Oh, that's really interesting to know because I think you know the pictures are really what you know real it really goes with the story so well and it just work it just works well together and it's so nice to see that you know when a story and the pictures can really just kind of be so cohesive yeah, and be sorry shivam has done a great work yes for sure i completely agree uh, shout out to him um, but, you know, kind of moving on to translation. So, uh, like I mentioned, you've translated for Amitav Ghosh, uh, Umanyu Chatterjee, but you've also translated children's books, right? Like, say, Bumoni's Banana Trees and God's Little Ant, published by Tulika. Um, what do you find different about translating for children's books as opposed to, like, you know, higher like like books meant for adults basically what is the difference you find just translating for children's picture books especially i'll digress a little uh, my journey as a translator uh, started uh, before the hungry type the first book i had translated was a uh, human rights photographer fuzzel shapes uh, he's switzerland based photographer uh, he did a book on the Vrindavan Widows, the plight of uh, the Vrindavan Widows. Uh, so it was a trilingual book. It was published by a very well-known publisher in Germany. It was called Moksha. It was my first translation. So it was, uh, sadly, it was never published in India. And when I uh, saw the first copy for the first time, uh, when I was a fellow, I was the translator in residence in the British Center for Literary Translation uh, in the University of East Anglia. So I was in the UK when I saw the book for the first time. So, and I, I never got it in India. So uh, it was an experience to remember. Uh, so I started with Fazal's uh, Moksha. Then I did Amitabh Ghosh's uh, Hungry Tide. And then after a long gap, I did Bumoni. And then uh, between Bumoni and uh, another book, I did Upamanu's um, The Revenge of the uh, uh, Non-Vegetarian. And after that, <coughs> I did another book with Tulika and then this. I don't um, think I... Um, there was any difference between translating for the adult and uh, translating for children. So I just, uh, it just come naturally to me. I just keep it in mind that uh, the translation would not read like a translation. 
I, I would have to translate it in such a way that it would not read like a translation. There will be no veil or something, a veil of another language between my translated work and uh, the reader. That's what I tried. So I did here also, not uh, in Bumoni and uh, other. Okay, no, but that's really interesting to know that you kind of approach it in the same way. But at no point do you feel that, oh, it's a different audience, so maybe I should maybe approach it differently in terms of how you're translating or how you're writing it? No. I translate it as a reader, I think. So okay. As, as if I'm reading the book. So I <clears throat> translate a few paragraphs and then read it again. Um, so what tips or advice would you give writers and translators? It's a difficult question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you can teach creativity to anybody. So uh, there are, I know there are uh, courses in creative writing in many, many colleges and universities across the globe. I don't know how they teach students to be more creative. Uh, the only thing I can tell uh, the, 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 the aspiring writers that observe keenly, read a lot, write a lot. And, that's all. and uh, for the translators, try to uh, uh, translate in a way that it doesn't look like a read like a translation. That's yeah. Yeah, for sure. No, that's, I think that's very useful um, advice for sure. I think even, you know, for translators to keep in mind that it shouldn't read like a translation uh, and as a story on its own, which I think is great. Um, so finally, what would you like for readers to take from Jupli's Honey Box? I didn't write it to give any message to anybody. So whatever. Uh... We should not think children as just helpless little people. Given a little support, they too have uh, power to make big changes. We must not forget the likes of uh, like uh, Greta Thunberg or Malala Yousafzai. So keep that in mind. Yeah, for sure. And with that, we've come to the end of Book Talk. Jupli's Honey Box is out now. It's another shout out to the book. So you can pick it up. Uh, order it from our website, pick it up from bookstores. Uh, it's available. So yeah, thank you so much for joining us, Sachantya. It was an absolute pleasure to talk to you.